So that's um, what we talked about in uh, in concrete. Yes. So you see that we're trying to check our three stages, right? The yes. first one is the lowest, and we make it very easy for any teacher, if they're not absolutely unimportant of which kind of school they are at, uh, to address uh, uh, research aspects. So maybe they are in small, doesn't matter, they could be for so that everybody can go there, ask questions, and find contacts. The second level would be um, the uh, be there, sorry, uh, the specialists, obviously, so that you can have something like a coach, maybe, and you know how to contact these people, and again, don't hesitate to contact them because then that will be their job to support you. And the highest level would be what I suggested. Magazine for those of you who are already active in research to find a platform where they can find the Good. So far, so good or not good because not everything has uh, been materialized yet. The next step would be to, um, to update you on what exactly is happening at the moment. So that we know discuss further possibilities or maybe you have any suggestions as to what you would wish or what kind of support you would want to have in these uh, research aspects. Okay? Yes. Right. Um, yeah, so actually if you can see in, in the second annex then you No worries. Um, so in um, so basically in 2014 the annual report is what we've done the last year. Um, so we've done a lot of piloting in projects. So for example, we have the, the regional publication uh, that was made in the History That Connects project. It's really it has been piloted and then so that it's really evident based. Uh, whether it worked, but also in terms of like quality assurance. Um, we are hosting master students from Erasmus University who are doing their own research and we well, facilitate that. Um, so mostly in cooperation with the, the historian editors. And um, we participated in a research project uh, on making history education work for tolerance uh, and that made led to country reports from uh, Denmark, Latvia and Slovakia. Um, but as you can see, I mean basically it was always or it is quality assurance for the development of material or it is uh, well a service that we also provide. I mean we also benefit from the work that the master students are doing because now they're working on source collections for example that we share with the wider network. Um, and the other one was a partner project. So actually what we're now doing in the uh, 2015 is also uh, going to be again a partner project. So the action plan said, okay, we want to have like a better understanding of different uh, challenges and opportunities for the use of uh, technologies, uh, the teaching and learning uh, of, first, of the First World War. So actually uh, we're now doing a lot of work. We want to make sure that what we delivered is actually meeting the needs. Um, and also if we're going to, how to prioritize uh, what we're going to develop next. So there are some easy wins, some very obvious gaps that we now have and still need to fill. But in a way these are always going to be the traditional ones. So perhaps people are, they want something new, not what has been taught already or what's now common, most commonly taught. And for that we actually also have the focus groups. Um, then there is going to be uh, research on remembrance. It's also related to the fact that uh, we're now doing more work on remembrance. You have all these commemorations uh, very often on a national level. Um, so what can we do for that in, in, a, in a transnational way? Uh, is there also good practice for that? Um, then. So these are actually the things that are really confirmed. Later we will go, uh, go on and what is uh, applied. 
and then we are trying to support the communication and cooperation worldwide. Actually, parallel to this meeting, there's also a meeting for um, like the International History Network, including organizations like the Hair Packet Institute who are doing research on the international level. So they are as part of it, but I'm sure many of you know. I think perhaps you have been involved as well. Um, so in a way, that research doesn't always reach the educators, whereas it's actually quite relevant, if only to reflect on the current way you're, you're teaching or... Um, so, and we want to introduce a broad, broader perspective. Um, so it's, part of it is going to map what is already there. So I'm pretty sure that there, we're going to look, what magazines are there anyway about history, about history teaching, about history didactics. I'm not sure whether we should have our own magazine, because there are many. If we actually have an overview of the magazines that exist, it's, it's, it's helpful as well, I hope. Um, so we continue with the research internships. Um, we're going to disseminate this, uh, like the surveys that we've sent. We're going to map educational resources that exist. Um, and we're going to publish, actually, a research that we did in 2012 uh, in Armenia, Azerbaijan, and Moldova. Uh, the research, why it's not published yet, is because at the moment we're working in those countries and we still need to be allowed to work there. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's kind of research. So, um, of course, <laughs> now it's okay. Now, um, now, there you have to be sensitive also, like, I mean, you want to provide a mirror, you want to make sure that there's also discussion within the country, but at the same time, you don't want to, it, it, it needs to be disseminated uh, dissemin there as well. So it was on, on recommendation of our advisory committee, actually. Um, so there are also some, yeah, some of the mapping that we actually already did, uh, which you can see in Annex 3 which is the, like the list of relevant research networks. So um, you have the International Society for History Didactics, uh, Susanna Pop, uh, she's the president of that, is actually also here. The History Educators International Research Network, HERNA. Again, uh, John Nichols is here. So we are already trying to make those bridges. Uh, but then there are also several international organizations. But it's more that they are more uh, interested in education in general, that others are very much focused on uh, history uh, in particular. I think one that is missing is uh, the historical association uh, in the UK. Yes. It's not that their primary focus is research, but they publish a ma magazine which is called Teaching History. And there actually you have, uh, you can see that there's a very active community of teachers who are looking to apply uh, like action research. And sharing that. So, so I think I mean that's perhaps also a good start if you know of more um, magazines or journals. If you uh, also in Asia or the Middle East, um, it's very good to know that so that we can actually map that. Um, yeah, could you explain to me what what is action research? Yes, I can explain, but you can put it to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. you said it both. Yeah, uh, action research is a research you do. Uh, it's actually um, involves your own actions in the classroom. So the idea is a teacher uh, discovers a problem in his own classroom. Like okay. students have uh, difficulty interpreting sources, then um, the idea is you're going to improve that uh, specific skill of your students. So you're mm -hmm. going to look at ways. First, you're going to identify the problem. So where does it come from? What are pro possible causes? for this problem, mm -hmm. and then you're going to find one way or several ways you can test out in your actual classroom to improve the way your pupils uh, mm -hmm. analyze sources or work with sources, and then you evaluate the process, did it work or did it not work, and then you can share it with colleagues within your school or, or, okay. or that's the idea, you have to improve your own skills in the classroom. Remove your own data. Yeah, yeah. Yes. that's exactly okay. the idea. Okay, thank you. For example, the special report in Macedonia. Um, that was done actually on request of the Ministry of Education. Uh, so that was quite good. Then of course afterwards you can see that we made the report and did they follow all the advice? You can question that, but at least it has been received. And, but basically it is 
when we start to work in a country, it's always on request. Not to be arrogant, but just because there has to be ownership, there has to be a good commitment in a country to start working. It's not that we're going to say you have to change your history. Now we want to empower a community that is interested to work on the innovation or promotion of responsible history teaching. Uh, in Kyrgyzstan, for example, we had uh, recently we got an invitation, and first we went there on a, on a week visit to actually learn about the way history was taught. Otherwise, how can you help? Then it's mapping what kind of research has been done um, and resources available on an aspect. So at the moment we are. Uh, partner in a project which is about the way the European Union is taught in schools in the European Union. So there's a lot of debate about how Europe should be taught, how the European Union should be taught, but there's no evidence base at all. So people have the assumption that it's, well, just a topic that comes in the end, and then they're a bit very disconnected from the national histories, from the decision making that's happening. So in this case, we contacted all our like national member associations, um, and we asked them to set, appoint the representatives. And there will be two meetings where, uh, like, one represent actually looking in uh, like a textbook to get some evidence. I mean, it, it can't be comprehensive. There's just there are too many educational systems. Uh, Germany alone is very fragmented. Um, uh, the, but also the use of IT in curricula, for example, we work with the hair packet for an evidence base for historian. So that's basically more started by us. Um, then we survey trends for upcoming discussion in international training seminars. But it's again, it's not sort of professional research. It's more sort of okay. Here are some is some information that we recognize it to stimulate the debate. Um, and then the recent thing is that academic researchers they need to show that they have an impact, that their research matters. And often education is seen as a good purpose and we're seen as good multiplying. So for example, Orlando Figas, uh, a Russian historian, uh, or historian specialized in Russia, uh, contacted us. No, no, no. But, um, and there are actually two calls where we've been overloaded with uh, invitations. One was uh, on the uses of the past. Uh, it's European networks of researchers. They do concrete research on the use and abuse of history, so very much on topic. So, and there you can see that we, with seven consortia, we wrote letters of recommendation, and uh, we have such a role to be uh, to be a podium for their research. For the Horizon 20, it's now uh, they have a program reflective societies. And the deadline is still ahead of us, but at the moment we have 13 different consortia again contacting us. Not from, the problem is that sometimes we've been uh, uh, contacted by five university consortia for the same poll, and only one can actually win. Um, so it's very competitive. But it's, it's, it's quite good that we are on the agenda. And I do agree with our website that it needs a lot of improvement. The thing that is good is that actually we had regular updates and we're very high on the Google ranking. So now we face the dilemma, we need to face the challenge that we want to have a new website, but we don't want to lose that ranking. So it's, uh, sorry, that was perhaps long, so a lot of things are going on. I guess the main question is also, are we doing the right thing? That's, uh, so sorry for taking so much time. Some minutes to digest that and discuss with your neighbor or neighbors. Sorry, I'm falling into my classroom. You mean get coffee? Where the coffee is an extremely good idea. Yeah, my coffee is good. And then uh, come back with you know an assessment of what we're doing on it and wishes. What else would you want us to do? because they sometimes complain we have no time enough 
we have good money enough and so on, but sometimes there isn't a will to do it yet. And maybe uh, it will be really fine, that's really fine if a historian teacher will try to find something by their own, because that's only way how to teach their students to do it. Yeah? Because if you don't know how to do it, uh, you know only to take another ideas, uh, another meaning, and some things like that, you can't uh, force your students mm -hmm. to do something meaningful. Yeah? And that's it. that's it. And if you do it, sometimes your colleagues are a bit angry because you do something more and maybe your heads will ask them to do it too. And you see, but it's uh, only a personal problem. From the back there, uh, we had a small uh, research in, uh, in uh, local schools, uh, it was uh, 25 schools, and uh, a survey for teachers, uh, uh, do you do research job? And it wasn't uh, official, it was just for uh, hist uh, local history teachers, uh, 